Hi guys, my name is Brady. Welcome and or welcome back to the channel. If you've been here before, fantastic. Take a seat, stay a while. If you haven't, take a seat, stay a while. Because either way, we are lighting this daylight coffee shop scene with a handful of lights, including the new Amaran F21 and F22 X or C flex lights, which are coming to be my favorite light very, very fast. And you'll see why as we go through this. So handful of lights here, and we're also at Vivid Coffee in Burlington, Vermont. So if you're in the Vermont area, please stop by here. It's my favorite coffee shop to go to. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into this lighting setup. So our talent for the day is gonna be Maya, who is gonna be sitting here. And I wanna start with our key light because that's the most important light for right now, which is this Amaran F22C. And it's, it's a light mat. This is all it is. It's just, it's flat, it's easy, it's lightweight. And I knew I wanted to use this light because it's very lightweight, it's very maneuverable. So especially on the establishing wide, I can't have stands in the frame, but I also can't have heavy weights really reaching out over. It's just, it just doesn't really work. It's not realistic, it's not easy. So by using this lightweight light fixture, I can stretch it out way over the frame, over the frame line, so you're not getting any lights or stands in the frame, which makes it very convenient. And as for this light, it's an RGBWW light, so I had it at 5600 Kelvin, which is a daylight balance, and that matches up with all the other lights that we're gonna be using in the scene, which is the 600D and the 300D, which are daylight balance lights. So what we're working with camera-wise today is the Sony FX6, because you guys know me, I love this thing now. Sigma 2470 Art 2.8 lens on it. And on the front of that, I've actually got a uh, Tiffin Black Promise one quarter strength because I really wanted to bloom these backlight, these highlights, just add to this, you know, faithful uh, uh, coffee shop, bright sunny day feel. And for the white balance of the camera, I've got it set to 6,000 Kelvin, a little bit more above the 5,600 daylight sources that I've got just to add a little bit more warmth to it. So what we're looking at here is our fake sun. It's an Aperture 600D. And I've got a F10 Fresnel boosted way up there. And we've got this here at 100%. We've got it maxed out. So I knew I needed a bright light, which is why I've got the 600. But ultimately that's what we are looking at as our fake sun. I've also placed it in a way that it's shining through these garage doors. So it's actually creating some artifacts on the wall and some texture and actually some leading lines that ended up on Maya and kind of directing towards Maya as she was sitting down. Just keeping the viewer's eye coming in, looking at the texture that's on the wall and then kind of directing, like guiding the viewer's eyes towards Maya with that leading line made from the garage. So if we had brought the stand a little bit lower, these lines would be more horizontal coming in on the wall. It wouldn't be as accurate as if the sun is shining in. That's why I use this tall stand to really bring it up higher in the sky, like the sun is coming in from the sky rather than a horizontal level. One thing I do want to mention is that for the first time in forever in Vermont, it's sunny out. I didn't actually want it to be sunny because I wanted to make my own sun, but I scouted this knowing that the sun in the sky is going this way. I use the Sun Seeker app. So knowing that the sun's coming this way, it's actually gonna splash like it is right here. But we have our 600D inverted on that wall. So I knew that we'd probably be okay and we're not kind of fighting two different sun directions. But that's something you wanna keep in mind when you get to the location is take note of windows. One of the questions you should be asking is which direction are we facing? East, north, west, south? Take out the Sun Seeker app, know when your call time and when your shoot time is gonna be and try to plan that around the sun direction and you can kind of work back and forth. And then to help with the 600 that we've got outside, I use a lot of these plants that are just hanging out in the coffee shop anyway to create texture pops. Like you can see that it's creating a little bit of texture here as the sun's going, or the 600 is shining through it, just because we've got a large white wall and with any large white wall, you wanna break up with texture in any way. So you see these beams of light that are coming in here. You can see that by putting anything here, it's gonna create a shadow, adding contrast and visual interest because we don't want just a bright white wall. It's gonna take the eye immediately away from the viewer or from the talent onto the wall and that's something that we don't want. So I noticed that on the table, I didn't like how flat the table was. I wanted to add maybe a harsh textured sunlight pop but I didn't want it to come onto Maya as well. So I used this 300D with a Fresnel 2X as my hard light source. And I brought it through this little bush here because bushes can create texture and really break up that light so it's not so hot and so specular. Creating it like the sun is coming from the same direction as is our fake sun, the 600D that's outside. So the 300D with the 2X Fresnel. And really this light was only at 25%. It's not bright, we didn't need much. Less is more, I always say that, I mean it. Less is more, we didn't want it to be distracting. You don't want people to notice the light. You just kind of want it to be felt and seen as a little bit of texture across the table. I forgot my floppy and I needed a cutter to like, you know, make a nice slash of light. And uh, I've got a bin cover that 
it's it's gonna work, but I noticed that it's still casting a little bit of like a yellow glow on him. So even more low budget and DIY, we're gonna take a sweater. And oh yeah, it's definitely making, it's subtle, but you see it's just a little bit less of a yellow cast on his side because the light's cutting through this and being ultimately a yellow softbox, which is not what we want. But hey, work with what you got. That's all we got. So just like I forgot the cutter, I forgot some neck as well, but I had a five in one disc, not ideal. I would want a lot larger of a source to block out any kind of bounce light because this whole building is white. Light's gonna bounce in and around and everywhere and fill in the shadow side. So best I had on hand right now is a five in one disc. It still worked, but you know, not as ideal as I want to, but we got that just as close as we could to the frame line and then dialed it back from there to see how much neg we actually wanted and how much uh, contrast ratio we wanted for that wrap of light coming from the key light. So I started with the medium and now that we've got that shot done and out of the way, we're gonna actually move backwards to an establishing. Typically when going in, I'd probably start with an establishing and move in, but we're gonna backtrack a little bit here. So some things to look out for when you're moving to your establishing shot, you can't have stands, you can't have lights as close to your subject. So you're not gonna have as soft as light. You're gonna have to make some slight modifications, but consistency is the main thing that you're looking for here. So it's okay if your shots vary a little bit if you're zooming in and comparing back and forth. So when we move to the establishing the wide scene, the biggest issue that you're gonna run into when doing that is probably on your key light. And that's the glory of using this flex light is because we've got this boom arm spread way over the scene because our frame line ends up being about right here. So it's really going over the entire top of the frame and by using the arm in such a lightweight light, that's exactly why I chose to use this flex light because it's not gonna weigh down this arm. It's not gonna you know, bend or risk falling. It's just very easy to maneuver. It's very easy to bring back up and down, make changes to. So for whoever's moving the stands, moving the lights, it's very easy to do so. And nothing changed as far as the output of the light. It stayed at 100% because I had it maxed out. So I couldn't bring it any brighter. So what I then am going to do in post is probably make a power window around her face and then really bring down the exposure of everything else in the frame because we couldn't bring this light up any further. As far as the other lights in the scene, nothing changed. Uh, we kept the 600 outside on the same place on the wall and this light stayed here as well because the 300, there's no sense to move it out any further because we already had the light far out of the frame to create this hard texture across the table. So the only thing that really changed was the key light here and then we had to pull back that negative fill as well, just a little bit to keep it out of the frame to keep the light from bouncing off of the wall back onto her near side. We just finished up with the tight shot, which was ultimately just moving in for a couple different details because I wanted to see how soft we can make this amaran when moving it in as a really you know, close near soft source. So what we did was just bring it down and really close, ultimately almost up to our frame line just to see how soft we can make this light. And I brought it down because I wanted to have a little bit more contrast and wrap across some of the edges on her hand when she's writing. You still see some of this side light, Rembrandt lighting on her face when I pan up there. And it looked, it looked really, really nice and safe to say I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be using this light a couple more times. So that wraps up everything in this video. We talked about the establishing wide, we talked about that medium and then even into the tight. I wanna give a huge thank you to Vivid Coffee who made all of this happen. Again, if you're in the Vermont area, please stop by. Huge thank you to Matt who did all the behind the scenes as well. I'm gonna leave his information there. Noah who drove all the way up from Massachusetts essentially to be a gaffer, grip, PA, everything else that we needed. And then a thank you to Maya for standing in as well. I'm gonna leave everybody's socials in here and down below as well, but that wraps up this video. So I'll see you guys next week. Really. Bye.